The Fox Texas Trio is back. Rudy, it's no secret. Democrats have not won statewide in a long time. Could this year be the year? You know, Stephen, the, the past 12 years, there has been a path to victory for the Democrats, a roadmap written by Bill Clinton himself when he won the White House. All Red seems to recognize that there is that opportunity, which he seems to be campaigning for Miss Congeniality Award, trying to be the candidate for everyone, which is why I chose that word. The problem is All Red is tied to a very unpopular president, a party platform that polls consistently show is not attracting moderates and independents here in Texas. And he's running at a time when the price for a burrito at a popular food chain here in Austin cost $17. You know, you can count Cruz linking all red to Bidenomics on that one. The DNC claims that Texas is in play and has promised to pump a lot of money into all red's campaign. But I think party leaders later this summer, they're going to have to shift their focus to start saving their incumbents. Some political analysts saying that have identified as many as eight seats in the Senate are at risk of being flipped for the GOP. So I think that all red will start off strong and then get left out on by himself by the DNC, Stephen. Man, that's an expensive uh, burrito. Greg, do you think there's enough dislike to flip this state? Enough people not liking Ted Cruz to do that? At this point in the game, I don't. I mean, if this were a choice over who Texans would prefer to go grab a cold beer with, then for sure the smart, very likable former NFL linebacker would get the majority of nods. But the bottom line here is who will stand up for the interests of Texas against the likes of Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden? While Allred has shown some very limited willingness to cross partisan lines on issues like the border, I'm not sure a majority of Texans believe he'd continue to selectively buck his own party if elected. Allred's best hope, and Rudy talked about this, is to uh, somehow convince the lion's share of so-called independents he will not be the in-the-bag for Biden upper chamber vote that Cruz claims he will be. And that's a tall order given his voting record and Cruz's proven capacity to make the case to the contrary. Now, the day after Colin Allred locked up the, the primary, the nomination for the Democratic Party, the Cruz campaign rolled out an ad from some, former, some current Democrats saying that they were breaking with party lines to vote for Ted Cruz. Rudy, is this just uh, the people in that ad, or are Democrats really going to break for Ted Cruz? No, I don't think it's going to be a big uh, in run uh, by the Democrats to use an NFL term. So, no, I, I think that the congressman is right. Uh, I don't see a lot, a big jump of uh, moderate Democrats, the blue dog Democrats going over there. You know, there's still maybe a few exist, uh, but, you know, that maybe they're going to stay home in November. And if that happens and an independent stay home, you know, it's going to be decided by which party base shows up in November. Cruz certainly has the numbers there. Big advantage with more registered voters here in Texas on the roll. Uh, look what happened in the GOP Senate uh, uh, primary race that just happened. 2.2 million Republicans voting, while only 961,000 voted in the Democrat Senate race. That's a big, big hill to, to climb. November is certainly a different game, of course, and the GOP uh, in the last few big elections, they, uh, they've been outplayed by the Democrats. Plus, the Texas GOP leadership here in Texas, they've spent the last few months burning a lot of bridges within their own party. So if moderates do show up, the economy, I think, will be the motivation, and that checkbox goes to Cruz. Greg, you'll get the last word on this. Democrats, some of them have been leaning more in when it comes to talking about the border. Colin Allred definitely trying to say that, trying to pitch to Texans that uh, Ted Cruz let Texans down when it came to a bipartisan bill. Will that play with voters? It could, but Cruz will counter with 8 million reasons why the Biden-supported deal was bad. That, of course, is the approximate number of undocumented people who've entered the country on the president's watch, a number that would almost certainly continue to grow under the so-called compromise. I think Cruz knows that's unacceptable to a majority of Texas voters. And as we heard last week, he's more than ready to defend his opposition to a law which would permanently open the gates to a couple million mostly economic immigrants each and every year, especially if President Biden holds on to the White House. That's why I chose the word riptide, because that's what the border crisis represents for all red, very treacherous waters. Ultimately, the challenge for the challenger is to convince pragmatic voters Cruz voted against progress on a crisis.
and that will never be addressed with a perfect solution. That's all the time we have. To see this episode or any of our past ones, go to our station's YouTube channels. And keep the conversation going by hitting us up on social media. We'll see you next week, and don't forget to let us know what you think the issue is.